Hello. Today, I on the bus is here at the Department of Alternative Energy Development and Efficiency. Today, the department celebrate its 60th anniversary, which means it has gone through many steps of development. However, it was not born with its current name and status. It was first created as a National Energy Committee in 1953 under the Prime Minister's office. It was then situated at the Faculty of Engineering, Chunalongkorn University. Only in July 1959 that it moved to its current location at Sapan Kasatsuk Yotse. That means it had been located at this compound for almost 54 years already. For the two breaks of Beach Chat today, I will talk to Dr. Tawarat Sutabut, Deputy Director General of the Department of Alternative Energy Development and Efficiency about the various plans of the department in developing alternative sources of energy for Thailand. Now, please follow the BIS overview to the various activities of the celebration of the Department of Alternative Energy Development and Efficiency. BIS overview. Dr. Tawala, thanks for joining I on the bus today. Today, the Department of Alternative Energy Development and Efficiency celebrate its 68th anniversary. Congratulations. That means your department has gone through a long time of development. Thank you. And welcome. Welcome to DEDE. You came on a very auspicious day. Today is our birthday, actually. Thank you. Um, the so Ministry of Energy has uh, enforced what they call Alternative Energy Development Plan for the 10 year of 2012 to 2021. 
The plan aims to develop source of alternative energy to account for 25% of energy need in the country. Could you tell us what are the key sources of alternative energy in Thailand under the plan? Well, the key sources of the renewable energy or alternative energy for Thailand is clearly it's the bio-based energy. Bio-based energy would include biomasses, biogases, uh, municipal waste and biofuels. Biofuels, well, uh, in conventional term would mean bioethanol and biodiesel. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this is, uh, came with a reason because Thailand is agriculture-based economy. So we have plenty of agriculture waste mm -hmm. and we have a lot of surplus in terms of uh, agriculture commodities. Uh, such as palm oil, uh, sugarcane, and cassava. So we could recycle those uh, surplus or uh, agricultural waste that come from those products into energy. So the form uh, that we could turn into, we can turn them into three types of energy that includes electricity, heat, and uh, transportation liquid, uh, liquid fuel. Mm -hmm. For example, the Ethanol and biodiesel could be directly substitute the import oil from the Middle East. So the bio-based energy for Thailand is a, a clearly a, a clear winner uh, for, for, for development in, in, in this region. Uh, you have mentioned uh, biodiesel uh, yep. to produce electricity? Well, occasionally, but, but our uh, primary objective of develop of biodiesel would uh, focus on replace them with the uh, conventional diesel. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a talk, uh, not only in Thailand, but mm -hmm. uh, many countries that have surplus of biodiesel or surplus of uh, palm oil, uh, that include Indonesia and maybe Malaysia, that from time to time on, or on occasion, occasional basis that we could uh, use uh, the excess capacity of our biodiesel to, to generate electricity. But that's very mm. rare occasion. Uh, but our prim uh, primary objective of, of those fuels is, is to use them in the transportation sector. Would it need a huge uh, investment to use the, the excessive uh, biodiesel to produce electricity? Well, it's not a huge investment, but uh, the value of burning those fuels mm. Uh, comparing to to use them in the transportation sector, it's uh, a totally uh, different value. Oh, okay. Because uh, in terms of generating electri electricity, there's a, there's there are some loss due to transfor transformation of of the fuels into electricity, but the substitution of biodiesel uh, in the transportation sector is a direct one-to-one -one, uh, replacement. So. Um, uh, uh, one unit of biodiesel produced in Thailand has more value if we use those to substitute in the transportation fuel. Would, in terms of if we use the bio, uh, bio uh, fuel to produce electricity, would that mean that we burn the, all those the residues from the agriculture to, to generate heat and the heat to generate electricity? Would that well, theoretically, yes, mm -hmm. but, but mainly the, the, the biomass or biogas uh, or bioproducts that we use to generate electricity are in the form of solid, not a liquid form. Mm -hmm. So we could turn uh, a solid agriculture waste, such as bagasse, mm -hmm. uh, palm oil, fresh fruit, uh, empty fruit bunch, and some of the uh, uh, wood chips or rice husk and burn them uh, and make a steam and steam could turn the turbine to produce electricity. That is the, 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 the common objective that we are promoting right now. But for, there are some, um, some crops that could yield a good uh, bio oil. For example, palm oil is a good example that uh, this type of uh, uh, vegetable or this type of, of, of plant uh, could produce a natural oil which has a, a chemical in a molecule basis very similar to a diesel product. So we need mm -hmm. just a, only a, a small uh, reaction to get 
uh, some uh, unwanted substance out of the, 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 the bio oil that, that produced from palm oil and, and, and it, it becomes uh, a, a, a normal diesel. Dr. Tawarat, I wonder whether it's, it was not pop popular to burn stores, plant to generate heat and then to generate e electricity because it won't be very good for climate change because burning those uh, plants will generate a lot of uh, CO2 in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Is well, I, I would argue that statement because actually the biomass uh, based energy or biomass, biogas and biofuel could classify as a carbon neutral because we do this analysis on a life cycle analysis basis and in the beginning of that life cycle it, it, it becomes a sink to absorb uh, the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. But once it grown up and it become a fuel and we burn it efficiently in the uh, combustion chamber, uh, then it emits the carbon dioxide that produce along with the energy that they produce. But with the balance, you could see that on, an, on, on, the, on the number that the, the, the biomass-based energy would become a carbon neutral. Uh, there are even some clubs, even some clubs such as a sugar cane and palm oil, that actually is a carbon uh, surplus, uh, sorry, the, the carbon sink as well, because the energy that they could produce, they could produce in a variety of form, and energy that they produce are, are pro even more than what they have been consumed. For example, sugar cane, not only uh, they become a sugar uh, industry, but the bagasse or a solid waste that we have to burn it anyway, uh, or it has to be de uh, decomposed anyway uh, uh, and emit some, some kind of carbon to the atmosphere. But we could turn that bagasse into electricity by burning that solid bagasse. And then sugar can also produce a liquid, a liquid uh, fuel such as ethanol. And their processed water in producing ethanol can be recycled back in terms of biogas because the, li the, the processed water has some uh, it is a wastewater, I would say. So it, if you kill it uh, good enough, you can recycle the biogas and use it in terms of energy. So I would say that biomass, biogas, and biofuels in Thailand, we have performed it uh, effectively, uh, at least in the, in the level that we are comfortable to, to declare that it is a carbon neutral uh, form of energy. Um, then apart from this bio-based energy, does the ministry plan to develop any other alternative solar energy yes, under yes. the 10-year plan? Yeah. Yes, Could you tell us a little bit more? Well, the ten, our 10 years plan or the nickname AEDP that stands for Alternative Energy Development Plan, we plan to uh, also promote the sol solar energy, wind energy, hydropower, as well as the bio-based energy. Uh, so the solar, wind and hydro would become another uh, a package that we would like to incentivize and seeking the investment uh, not only domestically but internationally uh, to, 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 to put up the facility and produce electricity in Thailand. Uh, in terms of the uh, potential, I would say that solar energy has the most potential mm -hmm. among the three. Of the among the solar, wind, and hydro, mm -hmm. because uh, it is very obvious Thailand is very sun, sunny, and our daylight is very long. Uh, at least in the summertime, in a good summertime, you can have a daylight for at least nine to ten hours. So the the yield of turning those sunlight into electricity, we are much better than a country like Germany or Japan. If Germany and Japan ha could have 10 gigawatt of solar power, Thailand potentially, theoretically, we could produce in that level. But right now, the only limitation is the cost of delivering the solar energy into the grid is still uh, very high. So uh, as a middle-income country, we cannot uh, support or we cannot um, uh, spend the money to get uh, high cost energy as much as Japan or Germany does. 
So, but I would foresee that in the future, if the cost of electricity that produced from solar panel would come down, uh, then Thailand would have even greater uh, potential to produce uh, electricity from solar. Would we be able to see the lower cost of such production? Soon? We have already we yeah. have already seen it. Um, I I remember quite clearly because we started the program on promoting the investment on uh, solar PV farm back in 2008-2009 and at, at that time we calculate the incentive uh, on the basis that the solar energy could cost about I think eight dollars per watt mm -hmm. but from that from then to now the price has dropped something like full time full mm -hmm. quadruply um, the price, the cost of solar panel right now is even lower than two dollars, dollars per, per watt. watt. Mm -hmm. So, so you, can, you see that a steep cut in terms of cost. And I think in the future, if the cost is still uh, declining, uh, it's good, good for a country that, that, that promoting renewable energy. That includes Thailand. In terms of energy import, Thailand has spent uh, the largest amount of money on crude oil, which is consumed mostly by the transport sector. Yeah. Could you tell us what is the government plan in terms of finding alternative fuel for our car and vehicles? Well, uh, the government has spent a lot of effort on uh, reducing the uh, import of crude oil from, uh, from, 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 from outside because we are net import energy for a long, long time, and we, have, mm. we, we, we noticed that. Um, in the past few years, the emphasis is, uh, was put on the, the natural gas for vehicle, or NGV. Uh, the, the, the NGV scheme was uh, focused to replace uh, the commercial trucks and buses mm. Uh, to turn from using a normal diesel into a, a compressed natural gas. Uh, and there are some public car like taxi uh, to, to use the NGV uh, from, uh, uh, to replace the, 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 the gasoline. But in the next, I would say in the next 10 years from now, the focus would be put on the bio-based energy again. Uh, the biofuels would become uh, a main uh, focus to promote uh, the fuel to replace the conventional uh, transportation fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, in the gasoline market or benzene market, uh, we will use the ethanol to replace the uh, gasoline by uh, up to 40 percent, but the include would comprising of three types of blending. First, we would promote the E10. E10 means the gasohol that blend uh, use ethanol about 10 percent. We have been promoting this for uh, four or five years now, and it's been uh, a very good promotion. Uh, at the moment, we are planning to phasing out the uh, normal gasoline 91 octane. Mm -hmm. By doing that, the jump in uh, consumption of ethanol would increase rapidly in the next few months. Mm -hmm. And secondly, we would promote E20. But E20, mainly the focus is on new car. The, the new population of cars into the market right now has been imposed or have been promoted uh, together with the Ministry of Industry and Ministry of Finance that uh, uh, most, the majority of the new car coming to the market has to be at least E20 uh, capability. And then we would step up to promote the 
what we call the Fred Field Vehicle or FFV, in which this type of engine can consume uh, up to E85 types of uh, ethanol blended gasoline. So I would say that in the next 10 years, uh, Thailand would probably have three grades of, of gasoline, E10, E20, and E85. And then after the next 10 years, maybe the year number 11 to 15, maybe we probably become like what Brazil is today, which is the normal gasoline is at least E20, and E85 would become you know, alternative, a niche market. So I would foresee that in terms of the gasoline market, we, we have a clear winner on ethanol to promote. But the story on the uh, a diesel or gas oil, a, a, a diesel market is totally different. And um, Thailand is now stopping the production of uh, benzene octane 91. 91. Would eventually we're going to stop producing uh, the 95 as well? Well, I would say no, <laughs> but, but, but uh, one thing I would be clear that uh, right now we have too many types of gasoline uh, alternatives uh, for the consumer. For example, right now we have a normal 95, a normal 91 gasoline. We have uh, gasohol, which is the uh, E10, uh, 91 and 95. We have E20 and E85. We have six. That too many, probably the world most <laughs> uh, uh, types of uh, gasoline into the market. So I guess right now the strategy of the government is try to facing out some of those, which is not impact or make a, a, a huge impact to the consumers. The first one we target is the uh, gasoline 91. And in the future, I would say probably gasoline, uh, sorry, Gaso Hall 91 would probably be phasing out. And in the future, probably Gaso, Gaso Hall 95 would be phasing out. Leaving in probably next 10 years, Thailand with three grades of, of, of fuels, which is 95, E20, E95, E85. We would become very much similar to what Brazil is today. Because Brazil have been promoting ethanol for more than 30 years. Most of the cars, passenger cars in the market are fake fuse types, so they can choose the mix of ethanol and gasoline on the consumer choice. So they, they, they would become very flexible on this. But I think Thailand has a capability of uh, replicating what Brazil has done in, in, in the Asian region. It seems that um, Thailand has a very um, solid plan mm. to develop uh, sources for alternative energy. Would you, what would you say about the chance of Thailand become such a hub in ASEAN? Well, there are some luck and we have to develop something. I would say there are some luck because uh, we have doing this, uh, promoting renewable energy before any other ASEAN member country. So we start first. So we be able to learn many things in the first-hand experience before our neighboring countries. For example, when uh, Thailand will become part of ASEAN Economic Communities, or AEC, within the next two years, and the border would be open, I would say the flow of goods and services would be very much duty free. I would foresee that the Thailand would have a, a clear chance, a, a good chance to become a hub of trading gasoline blended, uh, ethanol blended gasoline into the Indochina or Myanmar or even southern China market because we have a potential of producing a lot of ethanol. And right now our ethanol, the cost of ethanol uh, that produced in in Thailand from sugarcane is even cheaper than the uh, gasoline uh, ex refinery price. So, uh, meaning that if there is a car in Chiang Mai and the price of ethanol is two bar cheaper and you own a car that could fill up 
that, uh, using ethanol. It why is not? why not? Eh? And it is very obvious that when 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 the border of ASEAN economic community allow us to do so, we would seek opportunity to have a chance to trade biofuels with our neighboring countries and a chance to promote the freight fuel vehicles within this region as well. So uh, uh, the ASEAN would become you know, a hub of Asia in terms of ethanol production and consumption. Thank you very much, Dr. Tuarat, uh, for joining Iron Rubies today. And I hope that uh, we will be able to have a chance to talk to you again soon in the near future. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. enjoy our program today, you can see that Thailand has the prospect to become the hub of developing alternative sources of energy in Southeast Asia. We would like to thank Dr. Tuarat Sutabut, Deputy Director General of the Department of Alternative Energy Development and Efficiency of the Ministry of Energy again. You can follow our Eye on the Beast program on the MCOT World every Saturday from 11 to 11.30 p.m. It will rerun every Monday and Thursday from 9.30 to 10 p.m. on the same channel. You can also follow us on the Facebook. Thanks for spending your time with Eye on the Beast and I hope that you will watch it again in the following week. Thank you and goodbye.